Hi everyone, so this is just a short video just to go through some of the things we would have discussed in our curriculum meeting had we been able to have one. So I first want to introduce you to the staff in ACON class this year. So it's me, Mrs Harding, as a teacher, Mrs Ahmed as our wonderful LSA. She's new to the school but not new to the role of being LSA, so we're very lucky to have her. Then we've got Mrs Burke, who the children know really well, and she'll be covering the PPA sessions and some, spending some time every week with, in the class and then Mrs Sheridan along with Mrs Ahmed who are with the children in their bubble at lunchtime. So the school routines have changed since the start of September and I really appreciate you bearing with us while we make sure they're safe as they can be. So coming into school now the children come through the key stage two door so the main entrance door and then for and when they're collected they lead through the key stage two entrance door as well just to let you know year four must be collected by adults on the collection list so please ring the office in plenty of time if they're going home with a friend or if someone else is picking them up because we won't be able to let them go if they're not with somebody on the collection list and that's for their safety so I'm just going to let you have a look through all the things we're doing for our COVID measures. So you know that we are doing lots and lots of hand washing. So the children wash their hands when they come into school, before and after their snack, before and after their lunch time, and before home time. And obviously after coughing or sneezing or toilet use, then we have the antibac gel, which they really don't love the smell of, but it, is very, it helps us get through things a lot quicker is entry to school but that's before we wash the hands before and after break if they haven't had a snack or they're not going to eat a snack the mile run anytime we are outside and then as needed in class so for example if they're changing their reading book or they've accidentally picked something up that doesn't belong to them off the floor it's always available for them to use if they need to Further COVID measures, so they might have spoken to you about the resources, so we're really limiting what the children have out on their tables and what they share. So the children have been provided with a bag and in that bag, it's a wipe down bag that they keep either under their table or on the seat of their chair when they're not in their chairs. Um, they have their, all of their own stationery, we keep their exercise books in there, limiting when we're touching them, taking them in and handing them out, their reading book and everything else they need really. Um, and shared resources, so such as things like counters in maths, um, counting sticks, every time they're used, they're cleaned, or put away for 72 hours to make sure that when we use them again, they're safe to use. So in our classroom procedures, we have a thorough cleaning rotor before and after school that each adult, adult does, including cleaning the tables, cleaning the chairs, the chair legs, the light fixtures, the handles to everything. And that's done by the, by the LSA or the teacher when the children leave in the evening. It's done first thing in the morning just to make before the children come in to make sure it's really clean. It's done throughout the day if anyone different sits at the table. Um, re we also regularly clean the toilets and communal areas. So Acorn Classroom doesn't have a sink in it, unfortunately. So the children use the sinks in the toilet to wash their hands. And that's cleaned reg regularly, both by our LSA, Mrs. Ahmed and Mrs. McLean. Uh, so everything that we're doing is making sure that we're being as safe as we possibly can. The classroom layout, there's a picture of it here. The children are sat with a learning partner and they stay with that learning partner on that table for the week. As you can see, the tables are all facing to the front of the classroom and they are all spaced out as much as we can allow with the amount of tables that we need in the classroom. We also have the, all of the windows open. We don't close the classroom door and we have the fire exit door open as much as we possibly can. Um, we also encourage social distancing, both between adults and the children. So we remind the children about how to be safe with each other, model it through the adults. And also as adults working with children, we've got procedures of how we can do that without getting too close and touching their equipment. So COVID measures again, PE day. So as you know now that the children are invited to come into school in their PE kits. And our PE days are Thursday and Friday. So every Thursday and every Friday for this term, the children will be coming in in their PE kits. And that just makes it a lot easier with changing and them having to bring lessons to school. Hopefully it makes it a little bit easier on you with washing uniforms and things like that as well.
Now, the children can come into school in their house coloured t shirt. If you don't have the school one, that's fine as long as it's a plain t shirt in the colour of the house that they're in. Black shorts or black tracksuit bottoms, and then for colder weather, plain jumper and some sensible footwear, so, so trainers. We will try to get outside as much as we can because the hall space is very, very limited. So we need to make sure. So please make sure that your children come in with what in suitable clothing, because if it's light rain, like it has been today, we will still try and get outside for a PE lesson. OK, so just make sure they come prepared for the day. So Google Classroom. Now, you'll all be pretty good at this by now, I think, after the months that we had on it at the end of last year. So I just wanted to show you the two different folders. So you'll see I've, I've made a new Google Classroom, which is called Acorn Year 4, and all of your children have been invited to it. So if they log on to their, their Gmail account in their inbox, if they haven't already, they'll see an invite and they can log themselves in. So there'll be two folders on the Google Classroom at the moment, and the first folder will be the self-isolation distance learning. Now, this is for, for if your child at any time needs to go off because they have symptoms or someone else has symptoms, there's le learning uploaded. So in this folder, it will be uploaded on a weekly basis. So we will look, set it up on the Friday to come on the Monday, and each day we'll have a maths writing and maybe a theme or a language lesson every day. And this will tie in with what we're doing in class and what we have done in class. The teachers won't necessarily provide the feedback as they did when we were all working from home so when your child did something they they sent it in and the teacher fit fed back either that day or the next working day over email or commenting the feedback will be given when the child returns to school so because it'll be it's, we're still here with our classes so it'd be quite tricky to respond to everyone um, the children submit their learning exactly in exactly the same way they did when they were using Google Classroom for distance learning. They can set email pictures, they can update through the assignments. And what we will do is we go, I'm going to give the children a quick lesson about this on their Chromebooks in school. So when they come home to you, they know how to set it up and they know what they're doing just to remind them. The other folder you will see is a home learning folder. So the home learning this year, instead of a sheet coming home, the sheet is going to be uploaded to Google Classroom, okay? So we will upload it with the children the same way, have the discussion of what they need to go through. Um, the children will, unfortunately, we cannot accept models or lots of home learning from home, so the children can submit it online. If they still, if they want to make a model, of course they can still do it. It's just please send photos or videos rather than bringing it to school. The expectation of times tables, rock stars and reading still stays the same every day. And there'll be the daily expectations and there'll be longer projects. So a lot like last year, on the back, you'll see a bingo sheet and the children have a topic and they choose different activities to do. Um, the streaming will be closed to the children, but the ch adults will be constantly updating it with things and it will replace our Twitter feed. So if you need any information or you want to look at what we've been up to or you want to have a look at what a good piece of work, I'll sometimes share that. Instead of going to Twitter, log on to the child's Google Classroom and you'll be able to see it all in the stream. So trips. So usually this is where we talk about all the exciting things we have planned for the year. But unfortunately, we cannot take the children on school trips this half term. So as soon as we'll be able to, we will resume normal practice. And I'm already thinking of things that we can do, but we just need you to bear with us as time to keep everybody safe. And, as, and until we can, we won't be able to have any. So I'm gonna go on to how we're teaching maths. Now, how we're teaching maths isn't too dissimilar to how it was in year three. However, we really are trying to plug those gaps and reteach the children and remind the children of the skills that they might have forgotten about or that they missed out on whilst in lockdown. So maths in our school and in year four takes place in the way of fluency. So first of all, you hopefully you would have got a chance to come in and see some fluency lessons when we open them up for you. So our fluency in year four consists of daily times tables practice 
And then our daily fluency slides, which is a lot of recapping, pre-teaching and over-learning. So the children are really, really confident with the topics that we've covered and the topics that are coming up. We also do regular gaming. So on this PowerPoint, I've just given you the instructions for a game that I taught the children to play last week and they really, really loved it. So you'll need a pack of, play pack of playing cards and the picture cards as users of zero, five counters and a copy of the game map. Now the game map I have up uploaded to Google Classroom and I will do again, but if you don't have a game map, you can just keep, you can record the numbers any way that you like. So each player is dealt four cards. They arrange their cards to make the greatest possible number. When then the pupils write their numbers on the game bat, mat or on a board and compare using the greater than or less than symbol. So we like to remember those as the crocodiles. The crocodile's mouth is always open towards the biggest number. And then you keep, and then the person that has the greatest number wins a counter. And then you keep playing until all the counters have been won and you see who the winner is. We've also played this in class, making the smallest possible number. Some children chose to take it up to five digits in the 10,000. Some children chose to use it to secure their learning by doing it with three cards or two cards. So just one of the really nice ways that you, and things you can play at home with your children as well. In our Google Stream and in home learning, we will be trying to share some, some more of the games that we're teaching the children in class so they can teach you at home too. We've also started for our main, our main maths learning, a maths recovery curriculum. So we are following a robust curriculum for maths. We're using the Hearts Maths Essentials planning recommended by the Hertfordshire, Hertfordshire Teaching. And it, we've been using it for a couple of years, but what, we've, what they've released now is a plan that streamlines the priority areas. And just on this slide, I've just put the pri main priority areas of the autumn term for you. So I'll just give you a second or two to read through it. And it may be that for, for ACORN class, some of, these, some of these priorities take a bit longer than others. So we might not be by, by, the, by the end of the thing on number multiplication and division, but we will, have, we will have covered it, if that makes sense. So we're just making sure that the children have everything they need before we move on. And it goes, it dips into year three learning, revising year three learning, and then coming on to year four learning. We have also introduced daily spelling and phonics lessons. So again, this is a robust recovery curriculum. So really highlighting the, the skills the children have maybe forgotten about and the skills the children missed in the teaching for the year three when they were in working from home. So we're doing daily 15 minute sessions and it follows phonics and spelling patterns. It, links, it also links into the year three and four statutory spellings, which I will upload onto a Google Classroom for you. So you've got them there. And I'm just gonna go through what a week's of less, what the lessons look like. So we started out looking at the words which have the er uh sound. So we started out with the children reading out the words, decided if they had the word, the er uh sound, and we, and we then went on to looking at those words that had the er uh sound and writing them on our whiteboard. We then looked at the graphemes and we discussed the meaning of a grapheme, which is letters that come together to make one sound and all the different ways that you can spell the er sound. And you can see them on the slide. And we picked some of them out. And then we went on to using mnemonics and rhymes and using th the things we can think of just to help us remember these spellings. Because what I'm at, we're aiming to do is really help the children develop that thinking in their head. If they're not sure how to spell a word, thinking, right, I know how to break this down, or I can remember the worm went to work, so I know work is O-R. So as I said, these spellings track back all the way from phonics right up to year four, so the children are filling gaps as they go. They also work on key spelling misconceptions. So some of the learning that I've noticed with the children is spelling work, W-E-R-K. So just trying to fix those misconceptions. So reading. Re our reading expectations, first of all, are we read daily in class. The children have everybody reads time for 15 minutes, and that's usually after lunch. But in that time, they'll be able to come in from lunchtime, have a bit of a chill, read a book. They'll also be offered to change their book if they need to. And it's just a really nice, quiet and relaxing time. 
every child will be with the adult in school at least one times per week and quite often that it will be more than that okay the expectation is that we're reading at home you that reading at home at five times per week with you so either you hearing them read or you reading to them sitting down just spending that 10 minutes together the way we are, we assess children constantly as we go, but we also have reading conversations, which is where the teacher has the whole day out of class just to have 10 minutes with each child to sit, talk to them about reading, hear their reading, assess their reading and monitor their reading. And as I've said to you, there's a regular opportunity for the children to change their books. So every day we will say to them, if you need to change your books today, then let us know and they'll get to go and do that. That being said, we have got a, re a red card system. So a Akon and I are working on the ability to read a whole book without getting bored, without wanting to change it. So I've introduced, and the other year four class have introduced a red card system where the children have two red cards per term. Now this, this means they if they pick up a book like some, like we all do, and they start reading it and they realize it's not for them, they might not be interested in it, it might be, they might feel like they're not being challenged challenged by it. They might feel like it's a little too tricky. They can then swap a red, give me a red card and then swap their book. Once they've run out of their two red cards, that means they, if, if they're changing it because they're not interested in it, then they need to keep going with it. Obviously, if it's too tricky for them or too, too easy for them, we can negotiate with those. But we're also being, doing lots of work on Acorn, in Acorn about how to choose the right book for them. So we've introduced things like not just looking at the cover, reading the blurb. We've introduced the five finger rule. So it's choose a book, read, a, read the blurb, pick a random page, read the random page. And if there's no words that are too hard for you, then you know that book probably isn't quite the level that you need. If there's if there's one or two, well, two or three words that are too hard for you, that's the right level. If it's more than five on that page, then perhaps you need to come back at that when you're a bit more confident. So we're really working on how to choose books. And what I'll do as well is I'll upload the five finger rule to the girl, to along with this video, to the classroom so you can see everything there. Teaching of reading, so again, we're following a really robust recovery curriculum. We started this last year and we're rolling it out again. So we have three times a weekly whole class reading lessons and they go in a pattern. So we have reading for enjoyment and in that lesson, we'll read a short text to the class. We'll talk about the vocabulary. We'll discuss new words, what they mean, how we can use them. The next session, it will be reading out loud and performing the text. So echo reading. So that would be I would read it to the class, showing them the expression and showing them how to read with the full stops and the punctuation. And then they would repeat back and then they'd have some time to go and read with a partner. And then we and then in the third session, it will be something to do with the comprehension skills. So it would either be giving them a couple of comprehension questions to answer or doing an activity that relates to the reading where they're going to have to use their inference skills and dig a little bit deeper. We also have daily reading of our class reader. So the class reader that we are going to, that we have started is Michael Mapergo's Kanzuki's Kingdom. So we read that every day and that's a book to enjoy and talk about as well. And as I said before, parents reading to children regularly is really recommended throughout primary school. So please don't think now they're in year four and lots of them are confident readers on their own that you can't read to them because they love it. And it'd be really nice if that balance of five days a week reading with them, you could read some days and they could read others. So we're gonna go on to reading journals. So as a class, we've decided we're going to share them every week on a Friday. They have come home now and you will see in them, in the front of it, you will see that there is a non-negotiables and that tells you how, how we've agreed as a class they should be set out. And you will also see a bingo sheet. Now this bingo sheet is full of lots of ideas that the children can choose from to submit every week. So everything every week when they bring in an activity, it needs to be off that bingo sheet. And there's plenty on there for the whole of autumn term. They won't need to repeat activities. They can choose which one suits their reading. So if the, if the reading journals aren't completed by the Friday, the children will be given the weekend to catch up on them. Then if they're not completed by the following, by the following Monday, they might be asked to stay in and complete their reading journals in the, their entry in a lunchtime. 
please make sure the reading journals have reading learning in so they're actually about something they've read okay i know there was some confusion last year where people weren't sure if they put the home learning in there as well and these reading journals are just for the activities on the bingo sheet based on a book that they've read now the books don't need to be the book that they're reading at school so when they're bringing home their reading books they don't need to be those they can be a recipe, they can be a newspaper article, they can be absolutely anything. So read as many different things as you can. And I've, the, some of the best ones that I've ever had is when a children, a child has followed a recipe and stuck some pictures in there of the things that they've made. So it can be anything. It's really open-ended and it's a lovely book just to celebrate the love of reading. So the coverage for this year is on the curriculum map. So I know this is very, very small and I've uploaded this onto the classroom along with this video so you can have a good look through. So you, we've talked about writing, we've talked about maths, we've talked a lot about reading. So on this curriculum map is all the other things that we're going to be covering with the children between now and Christmas. So you can see for science that we're going to be covering sound, and um, we're doing our sound topic. You can see history. We're doing a study into the Anglo-Saxon of Scots geography. We're starting to look at settlement and land use. And we're starting off by looking at the UK as a whole, then looking at England, then looking at Hertfordshire, and then narrowing it down to Watford with lots of map work and things like that. So, you, And in RE, we're doing Hinduism. So after you've watched this, feel free to open it up and have a good look to see what we are learning. So also, like last year, you would have seen these before, the children in school will be given knowledge organisers. So there's the front page. And that's all to do with our history and geography topic. And you can see it's got key vocabulary on it. It's got some pictures. It's got some maps. It's got a timeline on it. And these are going to be available for the children just so that gives them some context about what we're learning. But also so they've got they come to the lessons with some confidence. They, they'll know something that we're going to talk about. And on the other side of the knowledge organizer is about is science and technology, so the words that they need. So something I forgot to drop in, at the bottom of our knowledge organizer, I'll upload this to the stream for you as well, is an inquiry question. So this is something that all the way through our topic, we want the children to be considering all the time. So the one on this one is about how Anglo-Saxons lived in their houses. What do they prefer? Do they prefer life today or do they prefer, would they prefer to live then? Or is it not as easy to answer that? Are there some things that they'd prefer in those times? Or are there some, and these times and they would like to mix them together? So the conversation around, we're going to be coming back to that conversation all the time. Right, key dates, I'm nearly done, I promise. So key dates, parents' evening is week beginning 23rd of November. It's going to be done via Google Meet. So it's going to be a little bit different. So look out for that. The office will email you when it's time to book appointments. And we've got the year four times tables assessment, the week beginning the 7th of June. So we're doing lots of times tables in class. They'll be doing lots of times tables in times tables rock stars. And I know by then we will be very, very confident. So the final thing, contact email addresses. If you have any questions after this, presentation or in general you want to contact me ask anything my email is on the screen for you now feel free to write it down um if you just let me know anything you need i know it's really tricky at the moment to speak at the door which is which is what we would usually do so do feel free to email me if you need anything so that's that's everything really and i've talked for quite a long time so i'm going to upload these slides for you so you've got them as a reference as well and thank you for listening. And I, I'm really looking forward to spending year four with Acorn Class. And I really, really hope that next time we do something like this, we'll be able to do it face to face. So please take care. And I hope to hear from you soon if you need anything.